outsider in this circle of experts, and that's why I'm very grateful that Marek Jabodzinski took the risk to provide me with the opportunity to ask a few questions. You may be in the position to answer. My own field after retirement is war demography that I teach at Germany's Security Academy in Berlin and at NATO's Defense College in Rome. The subject has no bearing whatsoever on my talk. When a layman like me approaches experts like you, he resembles a little bit a young boy who has not yet passed his intellectual formation. That's why some of my questions may sound quite childish to you. I apologize for that, but I actually have no choice uh, to do something about it, because that's how it works between amateurs and professionals. Still, my questions are quite straightforward. I try to match the sequence in our history books for the first millennium as, they are present, as it is presented by historians with the stratigraphy in the ground as it is discovered by archaeologists. So what I'm looking for out of the many thousands of sites between England and Mesopotamia, what I'm looking for is not a hundred, not ten, not five, it's just one site that has superimposed at the level of antiquity, that's the example of London, late antiquity, that's Felix Romuliana in Serbia, and the early Middle Ages, that's Kresla in Bulgaria. My second main question is, where is the evolution between these three periods? Of course, we have evolution within each period, <coughs> but every new period obviously tries to repeat from, the, from scratch what already had been achieved in the period before. If you want to translate my question to the Slavic realm, I'm looking not for hundreds, not for ten, again, for just one side that has uh, antiquity, vanity, strata superimposed by late antiquity, vanity strata, again superimposed by early medieval Vienna strata. The Vienna Slav strata are unquestionable. The vanity and the vanity strata of antiquity and late antiquity <coughs> are very difficult to come by. I would be happy to hear about this side. I want to invite you to the city of Alfred the Great, who gave us the story about Wolfstan and Trusa. So if you feel that Winchester, if you feel that the citizens of Truso lived in quite dire straits, they still had some impressive long houses. Alfred the Great was not so lucky. It's a quite packed stratigraphy of Winchester, and what you see here is the high medieval stratum. And when you dig down here, you immediately hit the antiquity stratum of the first to third century. Thus, there is no stratigraphy whatsoever for the creator of Wolfstrom. Of course, we learn that the court of Alfred the Great was a traveling court. He was always on the road with the tents on the packed horses and with the instruments for minting coins on the moons. But we don't know where he was moving to because no one in England. We have urban strata for the early Middle Ages. Just Thus, just not Alfred the Great had no home in Winchester. His subjects had no houses in Kaiser. So what we see here is an immediate jump from antiquity 
to the high Middle Ages. As before in the Slavic realm, we had an immediate jump from late Latin to the high Middle Ages. So if you look at Winchester carefully and you check the antiquity strata, it is very rich with buildings, with palaces, with temples. And nobody claims ownership. And so you may feel tempted to give one of these palaces to Alfred the Great. And he would be safe. And he would no longer have to live like a tramp. But of course, you cannot do this. Because Alfred, he lives 700 years later, right? We move to Germany, to a palace of Charlemagne, a very powerful foe of the Vikings. And whilst in Winchester, we are told that you cannot give a Roman palace to an early medieval ruler living 700 years later, in Ingelheim, it's very different. Everybody agrees. The Charlemagne's palace in Ingelheim is built, proposition by Saint Schütte, on the model of the second century forum in Cologne. So what we see here is that the early medieval ages, they precede the high middle ages as immediately as in Winchester, antiquity precedes the high middle ages. So Charlemagne is permitted to have a Roman palace. Alfred the King is not. We move from the Rhine to Spain. And we look at the Gothic 9th century aula of Ramiro. And everybody agrees that's an Amphi cross style <coughs> palace or aula with two verandas on either side. And the excavators stress that this early medieval aula is a seamless continuation of antiquity. So we have a second century building and the ninth century uh, Gothic place. If we go to the basilica close by, San Julian de los Prados, also called Santuriana, the surprising ornamental painting in a Roman Popeian style gives the impression of an antique basilica through and through. So here, even down to the paint, down to the chemical fingerprint of the paint, 700 year older models are repeated. And again, in this early Middle Ages of Yedo, you have no late antiquity, no antiquity stratum. It jumps right from Latin to the early Middle Ages. Scholars, especially Greve, excavator of Ingelheim, start to wonder. So he is looking for the orders of Charlemagne, for the orders of Ramiro, that told the architects, you built in a 700 year older style or else. There's no order. There's not a single architect who gloats that I'm the first architect in the history of mankind that dug down 700 years to reconstruct perfectly antiquity buildings. We move to Ireland. This is a second century Staffordshire uh, Triskele pattern on an animal bowl. And these are 700 year later uh, decor patterns of the Book of Celts. And the Irish historians, they of course know that Latin Celtic art designs are continued in the early Middle Ages. Antiquity and late antiquity through which they could have evolved are just not there. If you look at the stratigraphy of Ireland, the Roman period of 200 BC to 300 AD Thomas Charles Edwards cannot stop wondering about it. It's just not there. So the Latin Celtic style is continued 
in the early medieval style, and 700 years in between are just not there. This is continuation. Here we have a repetition. So the uh, Viking ornament has had its roots in Roman art. What does it mean? These are belt buckle decors of Germanic officers in the Roman army. And they have the Tierkopf style, as you have it again in the Book of Kells. Nobody knows how this would be repeated after half a millennium with no intermediate stages in between. We move to Hungary, when Hans and Goths are for the 5th century, Magyars and Vikings are for the 9th century. So the best excavated early medieval site, Viking Age site in Hungary, is Mosaburg or Mosburg. These are painted glass pieces found in Mosburg. Paint is a silver paste, applied to the glass. And they compare to glass counting stones, as we have found them, for example, in the second century lulling stone, England. So if you see something like this, you say, good boy, don't bother us with that. These are heirlooms. They are given from the parents to the children over 30, 40 generations. Fine. But if you look at the sides, there are no strata here and here where the parents could have lived to transfer the items to the children. And then suddenly, in the 10th century, after the generation saved these items for a millennium, they stopped bequeathing them on their children. It takes to the 19th, 20th, 21st century that we rediscover these items. These are Millefiori beads from Mosabo. These are first century Roman Millefiori beads. These are iron stylus from Mosabo. These are iron stylus from the first to third century. And no movement. Now we come to the point where you can no longer say that's a halo that was bequeathed over 30 generations from parents to children. Because this is this is the basilica of Mosaburg here, and this is the governor's palace in Aquincum, Budapest. And down to the materials, the special marbles, the special limestones, the tiles for the roofs, very similar. And again, Mosaburg in the early Middle Ages has no late antiquity and antiquity building strata. Aquincum has antiquity building strata, but no late antiquity and early Middle Ages building strata. So, it looks as if they are on the same plane, these two periods. We move to the main trading parties of the Vikings in the Arab realm. You all know that the Arabs, like the Scandinavians and the Slavs and the Baltic peoples, have this very unflattering reputation to be utterly retarded. For 700 years after the Nabataean predecessors who could write and issue coins, the Arabs cannot write for 700 years. They cannot issue coins for 700 years. But once they start, they are undisputed masters in these arts. I start in Damascus. This is the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, famous fresco. And this is a first century city fresco from Bosco Reale, Villa Ariana. And again, Trinks, Humboldt University, Berlin. The famous frescoes resort to antique motifs. First century frescoes in Pompeii <coughs> and Bosco Reale. Down, again, to the chemical fingerprint. These Arabs are capable to imitate. It's a very strange combination, a genius of imitation, and a zero in originality. Like the Slavs, like the Scandinavians. We move to 
Kusair Ramla in Jordan. You have a first 8th century desert castle with a 1st century Roman style glass. And here we have a very famous painting. And a unique painting with ancient Greek influence and indigenous Hellenism that is not local, not alien, but is local, not alien. So you can see that they jump from antiquity art right to the early Middle Ages, but they do not have these two periods, late antiquity and antiquity. They move to the steppe merlons of the Umayyads. These are first century BCE, CE merlons in Madain Sali, uh, Nabataean. And these are 8th century steppe merlons at uh, the Umayyad palace in Qasam al Hayyar al -Ghan. We move to uh, Umayyad Anjar in Lebanon. This is the palace of Anjar in Lebanon. And as was discovered long ago, it has the shape of a Roman custom with decumanus and cardo. Nobody understands why the Umayyads would build 700 years later in the same style as the Romans. And these are Hellenistic, late Hellenistic colonnades, arched colonnades, that again force us into the question, why would they do such? And then you have to add that in this site, there are no late antiquity or antiquity levels below from which they could have picked the expertise. They just jump from Hellenism into the early Middle Ages. We move to the Abbasids, the main partners of the Vikings. And here we have on the left a Roman Millefiori glass bowl, first century CE. We have an Abbasid Millefiori glass bowl, seven, eight hundred years later. Again, the experts know these similarities and stress time and again, yes, I say, they come back to this Roman tradition. Again, this genius of imitation, of 100% perfect imitation, down to the chemical fingerprint and this total absence of originality. Here we have another type of glass. This, of course, is a vessel, and this is a plate. But uh, again, as Whitehouse states, this fragment is very similar to this entire piece from Cologne from the first century. We move to Uchaidir. Again, the Abbasid fortress, like a Roman custom this capital and decomanus. And this is the substructure of an amphitheater in the desert. And this substructure of the empire <coughs> theater is indistinguishable from Roman amphitheater substructures 700 years earlier. We come back to Europe, Bulgaria. Here you see Ulpia Sertica, Sofia, second century, 10 to 12 meter walls, 13 to 5 meter gates. And we move 700 years to Pliska, same kind of outline, the same height of walls and gates. <coughs> and uh, what the excavators really stunned was that in the 9th century city, 2nd century roof tiles were used. So who in his right mind would use 700-year-old roof tiles if they start crumbling after 70 years? Moreover, Pliska was full of brick makers who could make new fresh bricks that would last a few decades and not be put on the roofs in a crumble link space. This is Preslav, another ninth 10th century site in a 2nd, 3rd century style. And the excavators again are surprised that uh, the water system dates to antique times. The antique building materials, layout and construction links them with the antique. It's Vashev's English, not my English. Uh, the thesis about the antique origin of the monumental buildings in Bliska and Preslav 
is not based on the antique materials found there alone. Its most impressive monuments are antique in appearance. It seems more natural to assume that they belong to an earlier epoch. But the archaeological evidence that does not allow this. Why? Because they have no corresponding cultural layer. So he says the reuse of building materials, coins, etc. These you can all claim to be heirlooms bequeathed over 30 generations. But the cultural layer from which the parents could give it to the children from antiquity to late antiquity is just not there. We come back and close to the end. These are third century Roman bronze coins found in Iceland. Who would bring cheap coins to Iceland in the 9th, 10th century that are 600 years out of circulation? These are 1st, 2nd century Roman Livonia square shell ships, and these are 9th century, this is the 9th century Scandinavian square sail ship. And uh, you all know the problem of the square sail. So we do not understand why the Scandinavians and the Baltics rejected to learn to sail when Europe was full of experts. All over Europe, they could teach them to sail. They said, no, do not sail. This is a freight ship around. This is a 700 year later Scandinavian ship. These are Roman square sail swords. These are Scandinavian square sail coins. They even laughed to come up with very similar coins 700 years later. This is small change, Roman small change, all over Europe since the Latin period, like in Iceland. The small change came through, and the information how to sail did not. It's impossible, because Julius Caesar gives a description, the ships of the Venedi, Holly of oak, the benches which were made of planks of foot, a foot in breadth, were fastened by iron spikes of the thickness of a man's thumb. For sails, they used skins and thin pressed leather. Strabo writes about the Kimbri of Denmark. They sent a, a present to Augustus, the most sacred cattle in their country, with a plea for his friendship. And when their petition was granted, they set sail home. The Scandinavians in Latin, they could sail. How would they lie to us? Imagine, Strabo would have had the chance to tell his audience, these are strange people. They're not sailing home, they're rowing home. He would have not saved, lost the impunity to impress his audience. So Scandinavian sails, and after 100 or 200 years of thinking about sails, Jan Bill, one of the top experts on the sailing ship, he says, that it was not adopted for 700 years is puzzling. There's no solution to this puzzle yet. We move to the runic alphabet. We have the same problem. <coughs> In the late Latin period, you have highly developed runic alphabets. And then, of course, you would expect some evolution. You have evolution in the antiquity period, in 150 CE. But in 150 CE, roots were generally replaced by the Latin alphabet. And then you move to the early medieval period, and they continue the evolution from here to here after 700 years, and they start from scratch. And after some time again, the roots are replaced by Latin writing. This is very fast Roman, high tabu, Roman, Trousseau. 700 years apart. And uh, so, second century Roman coins in the Beirut, early medieval period. There's a tegula from Aitabu. There's a specialist from Aitabu who knows much more about it. These are second century coins and ninth century uh, talents. And uh, we don't know why they would use them. Of course, we learn again they decreased them over 1,000 generations. But there were no scribes in which the bequeathers could have been accommodated. Even the fall of the early Middle Ages resembles the fall of antiquity. 
So this is third century London that was covered by dark earth in the third century. And that's the 154 meter basilica discovered by chance uh, when the uh, station was built in 1881. Uh, this is uh, Preslav, this is uh, Liska, and they are also covered by a, day, a dark gray layer. So even here, we have a very strange similarity, and I stop here. Thank you for your attention.